That's how God wants to prosper you. Turn to the person sitting next to you, tell them, God wants to prosper you. There's nothing wrong with prosperity. The reason why some people think there's something wrong with it is because they don't have a biblical understanding of the meaning of prosperity. Prosperity means that God comes behind you and He pushes you forward in the direction that He has in store for you. He pushes you forward in this journey that you are on with Him. And when there are heavy burdens, too heavy, that we cannot carry, God comes and He says, let me carry the heavy burdens. Can you remember what Jesus said? He said, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. That's prosperity. And now what happens is because He's pushing us forward and He's carrying the heavy burdens, now what happens is we gain forward momentum. God wants to give you a forward momentum in 2024. And when we get forward momentum, we begin to experience breakthrough. We begin to experience increase. We become greater because we're moving forward. We experience a blessing of God. And you know what? All of a sudden, you're successful. Success is also, and to be a successful child of God is also not wrong. The, the only thing that's wrong is when we think our success is measured by the world system, when it's got to do with a uh, social status, everything material, uh, that's when success becomes a problem. But when, when God pushes us forward and we begin to do His will, because that is what success is really all about, isn't it? Doing the will of God. If I was to ask you this morning, are you in the will of God? And maybe you would raise your hand, then I can say bluntly that you are successful. I can honestly tell you, you are successful because you are in the will of God. It doesn't matter how you look to people around you, but you are successful. Any successful people in the house of the Lord? One, two, three. Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. So, so say this with me. God wants to prosper me. And, and, and that is when we begin to carry the blessing of God on our lives. And yes, God even blesses us materially, you see. But the focus is not on the material, the, the material stuff. The focus is where? The focus is, the focus is on God and my journey with God and, and the plan and the purpose God has for my life. The focus is on the power of the gospel that saves lives. That's where the focus is. And now God comes and he prospers. And that is why John prayed to his beloved friend Gaius the following. He said to him, beloved Gaius, I pray that you may prosper. There's that word again. Prosper. Does everybody know by now what the meaning of the word prosperity is? If you don't know, go and also have a look at last week's sermon on YouTube. He says, so I pray that you may prosper. In other words, God wants us to prosper. Otherwise, this prayer wouldn't have been there. In all things, isn't that good? He says, in every area and aspect of your life, God wants to give you forward momentum in all things. He wants to carry the burdens that's too heavy for you so that as you gain momentum and you fulfill His purpose, that you can be successful and have everything you need and more. Say with me, and more. God is the God of more, much more. His name is El Shaddai, the God of plenty, the all-sufficient one, the God of more than enough. Come on. That's what happens when God begins to prosper you in every area and aspect of your life. And then he also says, and be in health. God wants you to be healthy. The Word of God is, the word of God is full of Scripture, uh, of people who came to God for, for healing. And I want you to, if there's anything wrong in your body, to ask God to come and heal you because God wants you to be healthy. We cannot do anything for God if we're always sick. We cannot. We must trust God for our health. We must trust God for our health. And, you know, I don't belittle anything that anybody might be going through. But I just want to encourage you. Trust God for your body. Prosperity includes you being healthy. You being energetic. You need energy, my friend. Nobody's going to hire a person without energy and vision. <laughs> That's for those of you who are not hired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why you will see I have a lot of energy. 
I have a lot of energy. I don't know what to do with it. That's why I go and run 10 k's, 20 k's, 40 k's, 50 k's. That's the furthest I went. I, I need to just get rid of my energy or else, you know, Marisa won't do, know what to do with me. <laughs> why is that? I've got forward momentum. I'm prospered. <laughs> I'm a prospered man. That's why. <laughs> you are prospered. Prosperity is God's plan for your life. So he says, just as your soul prosper. Now, here's the thing. The key to prosperity is the presence of God. And therefore, I want to talk to you about the presence of God and just mention five aspects of the presence of God. Because the key to everything, as I've said in the worship this morning, is the presence of God. Without the presence of God, there's no personal relationship with God. We build our relationship with God when we're in the presence of God. So the key to everything is the presence of God. The key to prosperity, the key to forward momentum, that is the presence of God. What is the presence of God? Let's look at the biblical meaning of the presence of God. And we're going to read a few scriptures. You know, we always talk about seeking the face of God. And we, also, we always talk about can you feel the presence of God in this place? We talk like that, but, you know, I've discovered that we do not really understand that word presence. I want us to look at that, and therefore I want to just touch on five aspects very quickly. And the first one is that the presence of God, the presence of God was not accessible, was not available to people under the old covenant. And before the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They, they couldn't access it like you and I can access it today. There was a curtain between the most holy and the holy place. They couldn't access the presence of God. Only the high priest could once a year actually access the most holy place. In other words, the full revelation and manifestation that any human being can endure. And only once a year and to make atonement for the people. And that's a key word, atonement. And that is why Uzzah died. You remember when they brought back the ark and it looked to Uzzah as, as if the ark was going to fall. And he reached out, he touched the ark and he died instantly. Because no atonement was made for him. There was no uh, instructions that was followed by him, no protocol. He couldn't access that. Listen to the words of Moses in Leviticus chapter 16 verse 2. Moses warned Aaron. He says, Aaron, be careful for the presence of God. <laughs> <laughs> be careful, be careful. He says, make sure that you follow protocol, that you follow instructions. Don't go unceremoniously into the presence of God. Be careful, Aaron. People die in the presence of God. You'll remember the story of the Israelites, you know, uh, when Moses was on the mountain, you know, they, uh, they became afraid of the presence of God. And they said, Moses, we don't want to hear the voice of God because it was so loud and thunderous. They were afraid of that presence. They said, no, Moses, let God speak to you. You will talk to us. Let's falter the presence. <laughs> the good news is today, through the blood of Jesus Christ, you and F have full ex access to the most holy place. Listen to the word of God in Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verse 90 to 20. He says, and so, and so, dear brothers and sisters, talking to us here today as his church, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place. I want you to be excited about this. I, I know you, we're still trying to define the presence of God. But, but just say, yes, Lord, thank you for a moment. Right, thank you. Don't yira. We can still boldly enter the heaven's most holy place. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus makes proper atonement. It is the ransom. It, is the f it satisfies all the requirements of God. Only the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus. Verse 20 says, so by his death, Jesus appeared, um, opened, and uh, by his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way. He opened it by the death of Jesus Christ. He opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. That was the curtain that separated most holy from holy. By the blood of the Lamb, He removed that curtain. We'll, I'll say something about that. But the first thing I want you to understand about the presence of God, we can boldly come. We have access into His presence. And it is a privilege that did not exist before Jesus died on the cross for us. Thank you, Jesus. 
Secondly, the second aspect that I want us to look at here is just the, the, the word presence. We find in the Greek word, the word panim, panim. In, 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 uh, sorry, that's the Hebrew word, the Hebrew word panim. And then in the Greek, we find the word prosopon for the presence of God. Prosopon and panem. And what does it mean? It means the, f- it means the face of God. It means face. Actually, it just means face, face. So what does it mean when we talk about the presence of God? That means that we come face to face with God. What does it mean? It means that, that we pay attention to God and God pays attention to us. Isn't it powerful? Face, face to face with God. We come face to face with God even though we don't see Him, but we know we're in His presence. Because our attention is on Him and His attention is on us. And we focus, we are now focused on God. We have disconnected from all our thoughts. We have disconnected from the material, from the earthly. And now we are connecting to God. We are now in touch with God. We are face to face with God. Then that we call the presence of God. Listen to the story of Moses in Exodus chapter 33 verse 16 to 19. Moses uh, asked the Lord, um, he said, Lord, your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on the earth. Your presence, that's what sets us apart. Then Moses asked, he said, Lord, so I asked you on this journey, remember the key to prosperity is the presence of God. Moses was on his journey. He needed God to breathe from behind, to carry the heavy burdens, to be there with them, to prosper them. He says, so Lord, in this journey, I ask you, please accompany me. Let your presence go with us. And the Lord said, okay, Moses, my presence will be with you. But look at how important the presence of God was to Moses. Now, Moses wants more. He, he wants to really know if the presence of God will go with him and the people of Israel. Let me ask you this. Whenever you do something in life, is it important to you that the presence of God is on you and goes with you? Or are you doing whatever you like to do and then God must just help you? (laughs) That's the wrong way around. Amen. So in verse 18, Moses responded. God says, okay, Moses, I'll be with you. But it's not enough for Moses. He wants to be really certain. He says then, he says, okay, Lord, now you said you will go with me. Your presence will be with us. He says, but show me your glorious presence. Show it to me. Reveal it to me. Manifest your presence to me. Verse 19, this is how the Lord answered him. He said, okay, Moses, the Lord replied, I will make my goodness pass before you. And I will call out my name, Yahweh, before you. If you read the story, you'll see that um, God uh, was hiding Moses uh, in a cliff, in a rock, so that he could not see his fullness and come face to face with him and see his face because he would die (laughs) that's the long and the short of it he he wouldn't be able his natural body would wouldn't have been able to experience that and live he would have died so this is how important it was for Moses to come face to face with God and I want you to see something here where the presence of God is where we pay attention and come face to face with him there is a manifestation of His goodness. That is why the presence of God is the key to prosperity. We cannot experience God with also, without also experiencing His goodness, His, His favor, His hand on our lives. Every time you access the presence of God, there's a manifestation of the goodness of God. And you know it's God. God wanted Moses to know it's, it's his goodness that's manifesting. It's his prosperity that's manifesting. That's why he said, I will make my, come on, you can read it. I will make my goodness pass before you and I will call out my name. He says, so that you will know it's me prospering you. I want you to know it's God prospering you. It's God blessing you. It's God making a way. It is God, hallelujah. And all that flows from the presence of God. A third aspect We also have the omnipresence of God. You've heard about the omnipresence of God, which means God is everywhere at any time. He's also omniscient. He knows everything about everything. Don't think there's anything you can hide from the Lord. He's also omnipotent, which means he's almighty, powerful God. Amen. So we know God is everywhere at any time. His omnipresence. But here is what we're after. We're after the manifested presence of God. Say with me, the manifested presence of God. 
That's what Moses was after. Lord, show me your glory. Show it to me. I want to experience it. And listen, I don't mean that the presence of God will always be a feeling or a goosebump. Uh, because there's something wrong with that theology. Because then whenever there's not a feeling and a goosebump, it means God's not there, which is not r- right. God is there. God is there. And you can have a prayer time with the Lord and it's a different k- kind of prayer time, but you know His presence is there. He leads you in the Word. You pray. You know He hears, and He's there with you. You know, so that is a manif- that's the manifested presence of God. And then there are times in the presence of God where you want to shout, and you're joyful, and you want to jump, you know. And God is so good, and He speaks to you, and it's louder, you know. And, and that's a manifestation of the presence of God. And yes, I've had goosebumps in the presence of God. I cannot lie about that. Uh, is there anyone, anybody here that's had goosebumps? <laughs> but it doesn't mean if there isn't any goosebumps that God's not there. If your heart's right, if you seek God, He's there. Why? 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 Because you pay attention to Him and He pays attention to you. Whenever you turn your focus to God, He focuses on you. Can I say it again? Every time you shift and turn your focus to God, He pays attention to you. So you can know he's there. So it is about you paying attention to God. And that's when we experience the manifested presence of God. And then the fourth aspect is that we have the indwelling presence of God. Because we have the Holy Spirit. We've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. We have the fullness of God. Why do I say the fullness of God? Because the person of the Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you. You've been been baptized with the Holy Spirit. Which means we are carriers of the presence of God. Some, somebody say, well, I don't, I don't feel the Holy Spirit. I don't feel it. Well, do you feel your spirit? Do you feel your soul? So it's not about what we feel. It's about do you disconnect and do you connect? Do you disconnect? And this is why, this is exactly why we worship, why we pray, why we fast. How's it going with the fasting? <laughs> I spoke to somebody outside church here this morning. I said, you know, it's easy to give teaching on the the meaning and significance of fasting. It's a different thing to do it and to feel hungry. (laughs) That's a completely different story. Maybe we should start focusing on that teaching a little bit. (laughs) Nesteia for fasting. Why do we fast? We disconnect. We disconnect. We are like Moses. We say, oh, Lord, show me your presence. Show me your glorious presence. Show your glory, Lord. We sang it this morning. Much more of your glory. Show us. That's why I fast. You cannot fast to manipulate God into anything. You cannot fast, you know, for things outside of God's will. Some people think I will fast because this is what I want. Uh, Newsflash. If it's not in God's will, probably you won't get it. (laughs) And if you get it, you're on the wrong track. You're on the wrong journey. And God is not breathing from behind and carrying heavy burdens. So what does that help? No, we want prosperity. We want God breathing us, guiding us, carrying the heavy burdens, prospering us, blessing us. Are you with me? (laughs) So we have the Holy Spirit in us, the presence of God. And the Holy Spirit says, because I'm in you, listen now, this is crucial. He says, because I'm in you, my presence can be a lifestyle. Every moment, Every step of the way, I'll be there if you just invite me into that situation. If you just invite me into that argument. If you just invite me into that difficulty, that obstacle. If you just invite me in in, in everything. If you just fill your minds with my presence. If you disconnect to the material, to the natural, to the physical. And pray to me and seek me. You will experience me and I will guide you. And I will lead you. You know that, that... ark of the covenant is repre- was uh, representative of the presence of God in the old covenant. Wherever the ark went, there God's manifested presence showed up. And the people could actually feel him for a while in that place. But now uh, you and I are the ark of the covenant. Everywhere we go, we carry the presence. You are a carrier of the presence and the glory of God. Everywhere you go. And you know, I really pray... I really pray that we begin to understand that that we carry the person of the Holy Spirit in us. That we carry the presence of God in us. And that we will stop focusing so much on feelings and goosebumps, you know, but just disconnect and, and, and devote. 
disconnect and devote and make his presence a lifestyle. Say this with me. I must disconnect and devote myself and make the presence of God a lifestyle. Amen. Amen. Come on. The presence of God. Everything comes from the presence of God. And Moses understood the presence of God. And the fifth aspect is that the presence of God is what sets you and I apart from anybody else. It sets you apart from unbelieving family, unbelieving neighbors, unbelieving colleagues. Listen to the words of Moses again. Now, by the way, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9, our bodies is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the presence of God lives in you. Jesus said, abide in me and I will abide in you. So the Father seated on the throne, Jesus at the right hand. But through the Spirit of God, the fullness of God lives in us. Hallelujah. That is why the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered in accordance with the will of God. So that we can prosper. Say with me, prosper. Look to the person sitting next to you, check if they're not sleeping yet, and say, God wants you to prosper. Maar nie nou slaap nie, asjeblief, die beste leen nog voor. Don't worry one of these days. Somebody's going to come and bless us with a new sound system. Somebody's going to come and bless us with air conditioning. Don't worry, it's coming. Why? Because we are prosperous. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, come on. If you believe it, shout amen and give Jesus a big praise in this place. And somebody's going to come and, say, and, and not criticize the carpet anymore and say, God has just spoken to me and, and, and here's the money for the new carpet. And while you're at it, we need to, to tile our bathrooms. Thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Why? Because this is the house of God and it's for God's glory. And therefore, we can have an excellent place for the worship of our King. Amen. A, a place of excellence. So, um, listen to these words. The presence of God. Exodus 33 verse 16. For your, let's read it together, that first line. Exodus chapter 33 verse 16. Doiki, 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 one, two, three. For your presence among us, come on, sets your people, your people, and me. Say with me, and me. Let's continue to read. It's what will set you apart from everyone else, is the presence of God. Can you see how important His presence is? People, are you devoting yourself to God through worship, through prayer? Why do we have the spiritual disciplines? Prayer, fasting, prayer and fasting, worship, pr- studying, meditating the Word of God day and night, let, like we've heard last week. Why, why, why? To disconnect and to connect, to come face to face with God so that we can access His presence Build relationship, and he can trust us with more, much more, much more. You know, there's a person in the New Testament that was that that knew about the importance of the presence of God. Her name was Mary, not Mary of Joseph, not Mary, uh, uh, sorry, not Mary, the the wife of Joseph or the mother of Jesus, not Mary Magdalene, but Mary, the sister of Martha. Mary, the sister of Martha, who were sisters. Their brother was who? Lazarus. The man that Jesus rose from the dead. But you see, there was a difference. Listen now. There was a difference between Martha and Mary. I will read the story just now. Because Jesus and his disciples visited them. And then Jesus was teaching. There was church going on. And Martha, you know, she didn't care a lot about where Jesus was or (laughs) what Jesus was saying. But she thought of other stuff to do. You know the story, we'll get to it. But I think this morning, the reason I want to share this with you is because Mary understood that only one thing, say with me, only one thing is important, and that's the presence of God. Martha, even though she was a good Christian, she was a woman of faith. She opened her house for Jesus, you know. She loved Jesus. She spoke to Jesus. Uh, When Jesus arose Lazarus from the dead, uh, Martha was running out to him and said, Jesus, if you you were here... Um, Lazarus wouldn't have died. In other words, faith. There's faith in this woman. She's a good Christian. Are you a good Christian? But the thing is, there's one thing that's important and where we need to place the focus. And that's the presence of God. And here's the difference between Martha and Mary. Mary knew all about that. 
Even as a good Christian, we sometimes neglect the presence of God. Now listen to the story quickly. Um, Luke 10 verse 39 to 42, the word of God says, Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet. Um, that's Martha's sister now. She was, where was she? At the feet of Jesus. Do you regularly, that's my question, do you regularly sit at the feet of Jesus? <laughs> you see, but the problem is Martha was... Martha was, <laughs> can I ask you something? How many distractions are there in your life? Life gets so busy. There are so many things we have to carry. There's so, so many things we're going through as human beings, especially this time of the year. Life has become a rat race. I know it's a cliche, but for lack of better words, it's so busy. There are so many distractions. My question to you here this morning, are we distracted when it comes to the presence of God because the only reason we don't access that presence even though we have the right through the blood of Jesus is because of distractions and is because we do not understand the importance of it can I say it again we don't access his presence because of all the many distractions going on in our lives and we don't unfortunately understand the importance of it so Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing she came to Jesus and said Lord doesn't it seem unfair? Now, here's the thing. If you get two Christians, one access the presence of God, another doesn't, but they love Jesus, the one is going to become jealous and critical of the other one. Here, yeah, Martha is jealous and critical of Mary. I know we don't have any Christians like that in our church, just if, if some of the visitors were wondering. Turn to your neighbor, just ask them, is it maybe you or not? Okay, no, don't, don't go there. It's okay, it's okay. <sighs> When last have you been at the feet of Jesus? Now here Martha comes. You see, Martha doesn't understand that there's one thing that's really important, and it's the presence of Jesus. It's the presence of God. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? I do all the work, and look at he, him. He's not doing anything. And he's so holy, and she's so holy, but I do all the work. <laughs> yes, but you see, here's the thing, here's the thing. It's not about you doing the work because the work needs to be done, but it is about where you will put the emphasis. Where's your emphasis? Where's your focus? What is more important? Quickly turn to somebody and ask them, what is more important? What is more important? So she came to Jesus. Now listen, she's, she's, she is critical. She is, says moeilijk man. Say, uh, you know, where, when is Mary going to help me? You know, why is she sitting there with Jesus? Why is she sitting there with the men? Well, I have to run around here. Now, now what would Jesus say? Some of us would say, well, maybe Jesus would have said, okay, Mary, that's enough. Go. But Jesus doesn't answer like that. He says, so... Um, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you? That's Martha still saying that. My sister just sits here while I do all the work. And then look at the arrogance. Tell her, Jesus, to come and help me. Verse 42, there, Jesus then speaks to Martha. He turns his attention to Martha and he says, Martha, Martha, verse 42. There is only one thing. Say with me, there is only one thing. Worth being concerned about. I'm here this morning to tell you, listen church, there is only one thing worth being concerned about. And that is that you will sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. And that is the presence of God and the presence as a lifestyle in your life. There's only one thing, hallelujah. Worth being concerned about this morning. Some of us sitting here, you're concerned about so many things. And you've come for a word here this morning. And you've come for the prophetic. And you've come for a breakthrough. And you've come to the right place. Because God's answering you. He says, you are so concerned about many things. But return to my presence. Return to the feet of Jesus Christ. Say amen. And if you believe it, uh, I don't know, give him a big praise. Or do something in his place. So there's only one thing with, now listen, and Mary has discovered it. What did Mary discover? That the best place to be is at the feet of Jesus in the presence of God. That's what she discovered. And listen, and it will not be taken away from her. It will not be taken away from her. 
Many of us have not yet discovered it. You're a good Christian. But you're not concerned about the presence of God. We must be careful for that. And I'm not saying it's the case in, in every situation. But serving God without accessing His presence, sitting at His feet, can quickly turn into being a religious Christian. Where we just go through the motions, we come to church, we have our little devotional, uh, and we buy a little book, and we read that with a little verse here, and we pray a little bit, that's 20 minutes, and we come to church, and if you're really holy, you go to cell, hallelujah. <laughs> that's if you're really holy, because I've been here quite a number of years, and we battle with that, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, no, please, no guilt, no, please, I face no fingers, no niemand nie, amen. So, but the thing is, my, my question is, have you discovered the presence of God? Have you discovered the importance of His presence in your life? Because I'm here this morning to ask you this question, with whom do you associate more, Mary or Martha? And that's something you're not going to ask the person sitting next to you, that is something you have to answer. We, who do you identify with more this morning? Martha or Mary? Martha? Martha, busy, busy, busy. Work, work, work. I do all the work. You do nothing. I do everything. Work, 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 work. Here's the thing. If Martha would sit at the feet of Jesus, guess what? Jesus would have, uh, Jesus would have finished. She would have been so filled with passion. And then Mary would have helped her and the work would have been much easier anyway. <laughs> See, some of us think we need to make it happen. We think we are in control. We are in charge. We, 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 I, I'm going to do it. No, you need prosperity. You need God to push you from behind. You need forward momentum. You can only get that where Mary got it at the feet of Jesus. So, I want to ask you one more time. Who are you more like, Martha? Or Mary, I, this is what, can I give you homework? I want you to take this question and in your devotional time this week, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal that to you. This is deep. Don't just forget about this question. Because God gave me this message to come and ask you this question right here, right now. Yes, we have to talk about the presence of God and, and, and uh, define that, understand that. Now the question is, okay, wh who are you? associating with who are you more like Martha or Mary because for many of us that is exactly where your answer will come from right there because God wants you in his presence and therefore before we're getting into communion I just quickly I want to encourage you this morning you will answer that question it's between you and God but I want to I, I want to encourage you Pursue the presence of God. To pursue His presence more than anything. Make it your pursuit. Make the presence of God your pursuit, your desire. Seek His face. Seek His presence. Seek to disconnect from earthly, natural thoughts, everything you're in, and go and sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. Mary probably had many things going on in her life. Many had, Mary probably had many problems, many issues, many difficulties. But she understood making the food now is not going to help me. It's no answer. I need to be at the feet of Jesus. Many of us had, have to return to the feet of Jesus. And we have to value the presence of God. We have to honor it. Because as I've said, people in, under the old covenant, they couldn't access the presence of God. We have to value it. Do you value his presence here this morning? You know, many times in worship, you will, uh, uh, you will have people and they will tell you after service, oh, I've experienced the presence of God, you know. And why is that? It's because they paid attention to God. And when you pay attention and you focus in worship, <laughs> I, I'm about to say something. I don't know if I should say it. But if you focus and pay attention to God in the worship service, God pays attention to you and you will be the person getting something from the service. Unfortunately, many of us are like Martha, and it's in the flesh to be like Martha, okay? Uh, this morning, uh, and uh, you know, I, I want to thank the worship team for a, a powerful time in the worship, um, but here is what many people will think, oh, the worship was too loud, oh, I, I couldn't sing along, you know? 
Um, oh, oh, they've got a wrong word here. Far from him is actually supposed to be for for him. How many of you picked up that mistake on the board here? Far, it's not far, it's for. And <laughs> being, being a, the pastor of the church, I pick up on all these things, you know. And as I was sitting there, the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. You see, Armand, that's the problem. You're supposed to worship me, but you look at everything that's going wrong in the worship service. Where's your attention? My son, you're about to preach on this. I said, forgive me, Lord, but I will mention it as an illustration. That, that's the only reason I did it, Lord. It's just to, to use it as, <laughs> as an illustration. <laughs> How many of us are like that? Come on. Criticize the music. Criticize the, 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 the volume. Uh, you know, don't worry, we'll speak about the volume again. And, uh, you know, don't, don't worry, don't worry. We'll, we, I know we must get certain things right. Uh, the, the, the words, I know. But come on, can we put our hands together for a team that showed up, that was faithful, that was anointed here this morning? <laughs> you know, if you've never led a worship ministry, and by the way, if you're sitting here and you can play an instrument and you can sing and do stuff like that, as you can see, our stage is empty. Where are you? I want to encourage you, connect with me, connect with Pastor Carl, because we need to fill the stage, hallelujah, revival is on its way, where are you? Okay, sorry, sorry for that, let's continue, <laughs> let's continue, so, so you see, two people will attend the worship service, one will connect to God and say, oh, I've encountered His glory. Some will testify and say, God did something to me under the worship. Another person will say, well, I, I, I didn't experience anything. You know, yeah, it was okay, but you see, it's because you're not pursuing the presence of God. You're not a worshiper. The Father is looking for worshipers. The Father is looking, and what is worship? Worship is I turn my focus, my attention to whatever is going on in my life, onto God because He's my source, He's my light, He's my hope, He's my everything. Hallelujah. You understand? And, and don't miss next week because we will talk about worship. You know, we've spoken about fasting. Uh, we've spoken about prayer. We might touch on prayer. And, but next week, worship. Because you see, worship is designed by God. That, that we will worship Him, love Him. And, and, and that's when you really turn your attention to Him. And He turns His attention to you and we come face to face with God. That's how crucial the presence of God is. I want to encourage you. And, and, and maybe let's read because we, we're going to go into communion. But um, I want to read Matthew 27. Uh, if we can get that. I just want to show you something from Matthew 27. Um, I want to say this to you. That remember that the people under the old covenant up until Jesus died on the cross. Did not have access to the presence of God to the most holy place. I want to show you what happened, listen to this, right after the death of Jesus on the cross. Matthew 27, verse 50 to 51. And Jesus shouted again. That was the last time he shouted. Uh, we know the last word he said was, Tetelestai, it's finished. It's finished. I've, I've completed my mission. I've paid for everything. Tetelestai. And then he shouted again, the word of God says, and he released his spirit. He died. Listen to verse 51. At that moment. Now, I want you to see something here at that moment. Ask, ask this question with me because we've we got to ask questions when we study the Word of God. At that moment, why was this the first thing that happened after Jesus died? The, the first moment, like Jesus dies and boom, the next thing that happens. Listen to this. At that moment, the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two. You remember I said to you that under that old system, there was a most holy and a holy place, a sanctuary, an entrance. And so that curtain that separated the holy place from the most holy was torn into two. Why did it happen? Let me tell you why that happened. Because the Father was longing for fellowship with you and I. The Father couldn't wait any longer for you and me to have full access to his being. And that is why Jesus, when he portrayed the father in the story of the prodigal son, he portrayed him as the father running towards the child with arms wide open. Listen to me this morning. If you've heard this message and you're far from God and you say, well, you, Pastor, you don't know what I've done, where I've been, my sins. I want to encourage you. The father still stands with arms wide open and that 
temple curtain had been torn so that you and I can have full access to him. That's the power of the gospel that saves and forgives sins and get our names written in heaven's book of life and prosper us so we can be everything in this world he called us to be. If you're excited, say amen. Amen. Therefore, I pursue you. So why was this the first thing? Because the father could wait any, couldn't wait any longer. That was the first thing he removed. And now he's saying, now he's saying through the death and the resurrection of Jesus, you can come. You can have access. You can come boldly, boldly. Listen to Hebrews 10, verse 21 to 22. He says, and since we have a great high priest, who's our great high priest? Jesus Christ. Listen, and, uh, in the earthly tabernacle and temple, uh, that was just an illustration, a model of the real deal that's, that's, that is in heaven. So what we see on earth under the old covenant is, is, um, is just a model of the real heavenly tabernacle, of the real heavenly temple with God being in the most holy place. So he says, now we have a great high priest. Under the old covenant, there were many high priests, you know, they, but once a year they could access the most holy place. Now we have a great high priest who rules over God's house. So, and that's what I want to say, let us go. Right into the presence. L right into the, what does that word mean? Panim. Uh, prosopon. In the Greek, yeah, in the New Testament, we have Greek as the, as the founding language. And in the Old Covenant Hebrew, what does the word mean? Prosopon. Face. He says, go right into the face of God. Meet face to face with God, even though you don't see Him. He says, of God, with sincere hearts. Fully trusting you. Are you ready to do that? Let's conclude. So God says, come boldly. Why boldly? You can look at the word boldly. Why? Why pay attention to the word boldly? Boldly. Why? Because it doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done. It doesn't matter what your past looks like. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. God forgives the greatest sinner of them all you can tell me pastor i've done things that i don't even want to mention you, you don't understand how broken you don't understand how broken i am or what broken situation i come from you don't understand the skeletons in my closet he says come boldly come boldly Come boldly through the blood of Jesus Christ. You have a high priest that has paid the full price, the full ransom for your life to be saved. Come, 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 come boldly. Come right into his presence. Listen to this. Hebrews 4, 15 to 16. This high priest of ours now understands your weaknesses. That's why Jesus came. He came to identify with being a human being. With the tempta your temptations, my temptations, our weaknesses, your suffering, my suffering, my brokenness, your brokenness, my past, your past. Here's the, here is the difference. Jesus never sinned. Never sinned. That's the only difference, but He knows. Say with me, He knows. Come on, say this with me. He knows what I'm going through. He knows my temptations. He knows my weaknesses. Yet He did not sin. So, verse 16. Let us come boldly. Say with me, doesn't matter where I've been, what I've done. What closets I have in my closet, uh, skeletons I have in my closet. My past, my brokenness. And the devil will continue to remind you of the past. So we can just go blah, 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 blah. <laughs> because that's his work. He always, he always comes with those things. I'm here to tell you, if you have a repentant heart this morning, say, I need Jesus. He says, come, come boldly. My blood makes atonement. My, my blood is the complete ransom. My precious blood will wash you, will cleanse you, will make you new this morning. So let us come boldly. I want to ask you, come boldly, come boldly to the gracious throne of God. That's the most holy place. He says, there in the panim, the presence face to face with God, there in the most holy, what will you receive? Mercy, forgiveness, mercy. That's what mercy is. It's, it's God forgiving us, wiping out our past, wiping out everything, wiping out your disobedience. That's a big one, disobedience. God even forgives that, everything. 
doesn't matter where you've been. I don't care. You can be the greatest murderer. There's grace here this morning to change your life. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. Because of the blood of Jesus. He says, so you will receive mercy and you will find grace. Grace, unmerited favor to help when we need it most. The key to prosperity is the presence of God. Let's close our eyes for a moment. You know, the Lord spoke to you here this morning. Now, I want to just pray a prayer over you right now. Pray this prayer over you. And then I want to ask you to, to come right with the Lord here this morning before we go into the communion. And this is my prayer for you. Father, I pray that right now you will put a desire in people's hearts and lives to pursue your presence. I pray in this moment, Lord, that those of us who are who tend to be more like Martha, that you will do a supernatural work because your word went out here this morning. And change us, Lord, into Mary's when it comes to your presence, when it comes to being pursued of you and your presence. That's my prayer for your people here this morning. And Lord, we want to ask, forgive us where we've lived life more like Martha's. Lord, getting entangled in so many distractions. Forgive us, Lord. We're sorry. Sorry that we've neglected your presence, your glory. Sorry, Lord, that we've stopped to value it. We've stopped to value your presence. We're so sorry. While we have this privilege because the moment Christ Jesus died, that temple veil was torn. We repent of that. I pray, Holy Spirit, indwelling presence, come and guide us and lead us. And help us this morning to disconnect from earthly, natural material, to connect the glory and the presence of God in Jesus' name. While every eye is closed, every head is bowed. If you're in this place and you need Jesus, you say, Lord, wash my sins away. Maybe you are not certain that Jesus is Lord of your life. You're not certain that your name's written in heaven's book of life. And you want to make things right with God today. Coming back to Jesus. And you say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, forgive me. If that is you right there where you are, raise your hand why do you do that that's just faith that's all it is it's not to, to shame people it's just faith thank you donkey just faith donkey donkey more people right there where you are i want to just ask one more time god speaks to you today you want to return to jesus return to the feet of jesus you're uncertain you're uncertain about your salvation Want to surrender your life? Quickly just raise your hand if He speaks to you. Because if right now you do a step of faith, that's what God sees. Every step of faith, every step of where there's faith, God responds. And this morning it will respond with salvation. It will respond with forgiveness of sins. Thank you. Many hands went up all over. Can I ask that we all stand to our feet here this morning? Let's pray this prayer to, uh, after me. If you've raised your hand, but I'm going to ask the whole assembly just to pray this prayer after me. I believe God is saving souls. People are coming back from their lives, from their sin, and, and, and they, they end sin today. God's, uh, God is accepting them. The, uh, the Father stands here with arms wide open to receive them back. Are you excited with me? I can't tell you how excited I am for every person that raises their hand and says, I'm coming back today. Today, if you hear the voice of God, today, today, today. Come, come, come boldly, come boldly. Let's pray. Say, Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. My Father, today I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And that he died on the cross for me and that he rose on the third day. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I'm sorry for my sins, my iniquities. I humble myself before you. Now, receive me. Lead me. Prosper me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Just speak to him for 30 seconds in your own words. Surrendering yourself. Giving yourself to him. Right there where you are.
Yes. Connect. Connect. Come face to face. Pay attention. Shift. Shift. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for touching people right now. Touch. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Siabonga, Baba, we worship you. Siabonga, Yesu, Hallelujah. We worship you. Thank you, Yara. Come on, say that song with me. Thank you, Yara. Thank you, Yara. And give him a big praise in this place. Yes. Yes, we worship you. I want to congratulate every person who raised their hands. If you're not part of our church and connected already, you know that it was just that you returned to the Lord. And I, I want you then just to give your name. We're going to contact you, find out if you were already baptized. And we're going to journey with you. Make sure that you journey with God. Amen. So we've got lovely people at the back. We've got Phila and MJ, and they will assist you. Please, even if you're a visitor and you like the church here this morning, fill it out and fill out that salvation card so that we can do our work. Amen. Amen. It's so great to be with you. Please take your seats for a moment. Can the people helping me with the communion? Please join me here this morning. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, I'm going to ask that you just continue uh, to, um, to hand out the bread. Thank you. Um, while they're handing out the bread, uh, maybe you're wondering, should I, should I not, may I, can I? Yes, you can. It's the body of Jesus Christ and His blood that was shed for you. And if you're fasting, take a big piece because it has to last you. <laughs> I went for a large piece there. <laughs> Just confessing. Okay. <laughs> Please join us at the table of our Lord this morning. He's here. He loves you. He's so gracious. I experience His glory, His anointing on this place. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Touch your people, my Father. Minister to each and every person. Wholeness, restoration, deliverance, healing salvation thank you lord for the house of god thank you for your presence thank you for your church thank you for your church so anybody is welcome doesn't matter if you've been baptized or filled with the holy spirit if you're a visitor everybody's welcome everybody's welcome to sit at the table of the messiah While they're handing out the bread, the cracker, I want you to see this. This piece of bread, when Jesus uh, instituted the communion, he says, he, he, he broke the bread and says, take this bread. This is my body that was broken for you. What was the first thing that happened after Jesus died? The temple curtain was torn into two. The bread you have this morning, speaks of the body of Jesus Christ that was broken and it reminds us of the temple curtain the temple curtain there's a parallel listen Hebrews 10 go study this there's a parallel between the body of Christ and the temple curtain that was broken as his body was broken the temple curtain was broken and so when we take the bread this morning what does it say it says come into my presence the father invites you to come into his presence let's pray Sorry, guys, am I too quick? Have you received bread? Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, this morning, we thank you so much for the body of Jesus that was broken for us. And when he breathed his last breath, Lord, the temple curtain was broken and torn into two. As we partake of this this morning, it reminds us to pursue your presence. And it reminds us of the privilege of your presence. We thank you for your presence. And we come boldly this morning. We pursue it. We access it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's partake together.
while we partake of communion this morning, the cup. This is called the cup of blessing. And it is the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us. It's also the cup of the new covenant. We're no longer under the old covenant, the system and protocols and law of the old covenant. But we have a new covenant. It's called the covenant of grace and favor. And therefore, whenever you, we partake, then the bread reminds us to access the presence and the availability. And the cup this morning ministers to us. It, it does a work in you, a supernatural work in you. Because it cleanses your sins away. It washes your sins away. But there's power in the blood to heal. There's power in the blood to restore, to deliver, to transform your life. There is power in the blood of Jesus here this morning to do a work within your life. If you need God to do a work within your life, just close your eyes right there where you are. And uh, before we partake of the cup, pray to Him and bring your situation to Him. Bring your sickness, bring your difficulty, your mountain, your problem, bring it to Him because this cup ministers to you. Remember where the presence of the Lord is there, His goodness is made manifest. And He wants to manifest that goodness in your life this morning. Ask Him to do it. Thank you, Lord, for the forgiveness of sins through the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for your goodness and unmerited favor on our lives. We bring our lives to you, our situations to you. Some of us, we need an open door. We need new direction. Some need, Lord, a marriage to be restored. Some need children to return to you. Some have difficult situations. Some need direction concerning their careers, open doors, jobs. We come to you and we ask that you lead us and guide us and provide for us this morning. We need you, Lord. Thank you for your blood. We pursue your presence this morning. Turn our focus and our attention on you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's experience how God ministers to us. Let's partake of the cup this morning. Thank you so much. You're welcome to place the cup beneath your seat. We will collect it afterwards. And uh, I'm going to give over to Pastor Carl this morning for the tithes and offerings. Thank you.